What's up, guys? Mason the Brock Anderson here, and we're finally going to talk about Chelsea. <laughs> finally! It's been way too long, um, and it's, it's really ironic that after my last video where I kind of just talked some about how you know, good, good result, bad result, iffy result, kind of had me feeling not too excited, we've won all the games since then. <laughs> and it just it's felt like a complete turnaround, and I will take you guys kind of through my thought process for each game and kind of how I was feeling after each win and all of that stuff. Uh, starting first of all with the Bournemouth match because that was a win that it was a good win and it's one of those where we haven't been getting those wins in the past. You know the the kind of ugly game where we have some chances but we don't finish. Bournemouth created a lot of chances because we were a little shaky in the back. They had a penalty. I mean there were several moments where it felt like that game could easily turn against us, but. We managed to come out one no winners. So it's it was a, not a pretty result, but it was a good result. And it was a result we haven't seen in a while. I still came out of it sort of feeling like, well, I mean, yeah, good result, but still a lot of concerns that I have with the performances in that match that still don't get me excited. The West Ham match, obviously, is where a lot of people started saying, hey, top four is a real possibility. You know, we're really clicking now. We're back. I was still unsure. Because, yes, it was a great performance on the road against a team that typically gives us a lot of trouble. But, first of all, as a lot of people pointed out, West Ham were terrible on the day. And, yes, we still have to do the job, and we saw that against them last season and Everton last season. We can come up against teams that are not playing well, and as long as we play well, we'll get the job done. So, it's kind of a, a bit of both. You know, West Ham didn't play well, we played really well. But the other thing for me was more so the fact that after that match and then looking at the Bournemouth and the Wolves results as well, it did sort of feel like that, okay, so Mareska's found a way to make us play well on the road. And honestly, I feel like we've got good players to sort of set up and play on a quick counter because we got the pace up top. So if teams are willing to step out against us, we do look more dangerous. So I was fine with the results. I, I was a bit more excited because I felt like, okay, we're not... I still don't see us as a top four challenger, but I do see that we're not going to be as bad as I thought. I, I don't think we're going to be bottom half of the table anymore, which was my big concern coming into it. Because, again, I was looking at Maresca as another Potter assignment. So going into the Barrow match, this was one where I'm like, all right, we just need to get the job done here. And we saw all the changes that Maresca made. He brings in basically the second team, if you can really call him that. I don't even really see him as the second team. I see them as other options because it really does feel like what Maresca has done is basically have options for every position on the field he's got two that he can turn to and then of course he's got some younger options that he can bring in if there are some injuries that obviously there will be a bit of quality drop off but it'll still just they'll have the energy they'll be able to fit to that position pretty well and they can fit into the style that he wants to play so when he made all those changes for the Barrow match it was kind of a nice feeling to look at that and go, still a good lineup, and it's all players that still fit his system, still fit what he's trying to do here. So it was a, obviously a good performance, a good result, but I mean, it's Barrow. So it's one where you're at home, you're facing a League Two side, you should be putting them away very comfortably, and thankfully we did. And it was a good performance for some players, and I'll, I'll talk about individuals in a little bit, but going into the Brighton game, this is the one where I was concerned. I mean, with Brighton and Forrest both on the horizon, they're both at home. These are the type of matches where you got a mid table or a lower side that are coming into the bridge. There's a good chance they're going to pack it in. They're going to be difficult to break down. They're not going to give us a whole lot of space to run in behind them, which is what we've been doing recently. So how's it going to go? Well, to be fair, Brighton did not do that. They did not pack it in. They did not try to make it difficult to break them down. They stepped out. They had a high line, and that played right into our hands. So I still can't say that I'm fully convinced. I mean, I, I'm more convinced now that we are in a top, top four challenge. I think you look at the fact that a couple of the teams, I think Newcastle and Man U are, I mean, Man U is obviously in a crisis right now. Newcastle are kind of hit or miss. I think Tottenham and Villa are still pretty good, so they'll have their moments. And then obviously, I think most people can agree that Right now, the top three are Liverpool, Man City, and Arsenal. Like Those three, in some order, are probably going to be in the top four, no doubts. 
because Man City and Arsenal are obviously, they've grown a lot. Liverpool, slot has come in, and they've got enough quality and enough experience with the players there that even with a new manager coming in, they still look good. But I think looking at that, that fourth position between us, Tottenham, and Villa, I think after seeing the Brighton match, we're seeing we have enough attacking quality. Even if we do look a little leaky in defense, we should put most of our games to bed. I think we'll be there or thereabouts in that fourth spot. You know, it's it's going to be rough at times. I do foresee that we're going to come up against some opposition where maybe they are going to pack it in. Maybe we'll see that against Forest next weekend. Who knows? But I do think we'll find that opposition that are going to manage to basically block it off, stick 10 men behind the ball, and just defend, defend, defend. And our defense is problematic enough and still has not quite figured out the system or don't have the quality to fit into Maresca's system. There will be goals that we're going to give up. And I do think while our attack looks good enough to score three or four goals every match, if they could, I do think there will be the matches where maybe you know, somebody's hitting blanks or maybe the defense on the other side is just doing a good enough job to keep us out. We will have our slip-ups for sure. But I do think top four, very realistic possibility right now. I, I'm not saying for sure it's going to happen, but I do see it as a much bigger possibility than I did definitely after preseason, definitely after the first match of the season. It feels like Maresca's got this team going. And that's something that I, I think a lot of people, a lot of fans, whenever people like me, whenever other fans criticize the board decisions, when they criticize Maresca, when they criticize the players, it's almost it almost feels like they look at us as, oh, we're, we're pessimists. We want the club to fail. We want to be proven right. I don't want to be proven right. If I ever have negative opinions or if I'm not thinking that the club is doing well and I'm not positive about or I'm not excited about this season it's not that I want to be proven right I would love to be proven wrong and right now I am being proven wrong Maresca is proving me wrong and I think that's where I know Rory Jennings is kind of the big hot button topic at the moment because of his opinions on the board and I I do feel like I I struggle to agree with a lot of the board's decisions I still think that they are idiots in the way that they've approached some of this stuff Honestly, I look at what's going right right now, and I think there are two things that they've done right. I don't necessarily know that they know that it was going to be a correct decision. I think they were hoping, and I do think there's a bit of luck involved, but I think Cole Palmer has obviously been a fantastic signing, but I think Maresca this season has shown he's been a great appointment as a manager, and that's kind of, I wanted to focus on Maresca for this, for this video for a bit because I want to talk about some of the stuff that I feel like he's done right that has got this team clicking and it's stuff that I never really thought a manager was going to be able to do. I mean, I looked at what Chelsea was doing and how the players were bringing in and how the transfer uh, policy was set up. It didn't feel like a, a simple solution. It didn't feel like most managers, like even looking at a, a pep coming into this club, I thought even he would struggle because there are so many different types of players, so many players to choose from. And there's no real idea no real clear mentality, I think, from the transfer the transfer board to really try to bring in a certain type of player for a system that works. It, it just feels like, well, we're just going to go get him. He's young. He's exciting. Go get him. He's young. He's exciting. It's a lot of different players, and it's a lot to try to manage. I think what Maresca has done really well, first of all, he's come in, and he's coming with an idea. He's coming with a system, a, a style of play that he wants to see. And he's very clearly sticking to it. You know, I do think that's something when I look at Potter, he was kind of all over the place with what he was trying to do. I, I don't think he had a real clear idea of what he wanted to set up this team as. And also there was a lot of transition with players for him. So I just, everything was not working for his season. With Pochettino, I do think there was a bit more of a, all right, we've got these players that we brought in, try to make it work. I think he tried to have some ideas. I don't think they worked very well. And then when they weren't working, sometimes it took them a bit to, to try to make the switch and try to fix it or try to do something different. Or if there were things that maybe would take some time to implement, I don't think you gave them the proper time. With Maresca, he's come in with a system. It's worked, thankfully, which I do think that would be something where if it didn't work, would he still try to stick with it? But it's, it's working right now. And even when it's having issues, he's not saying, hey, let's change it up. Let's try to do something different. And I, I do kind of appreciate that. Because that's something I've been watching some videos, some pundits talk about it, which most of the pundits are brainless anyway. But one in particular, I was watching ESPN. 
Steve Nichol and Alejandro Moreno were talking about the goals that were given up against Brighton. And, I mean, Steve Nichol blasted Chelsea, called him embarrassing, saying that it was an embarrassing performance. It was all that stuff, even though, you know, second half, we looked really good. First half, obviously, was all over the place. It was very out of control. Second half, we controlled it. So to, to base his opinions on the first half and call that embarrassing already shows that there's probably, he's, he's not watched the full game. He's just watched the highlights and seen the mistakes. But both of them were saying, hey, I mean, if the coach is telling you to do this and it's not working, you just have to step up and say, no, I'm not going to pass here. I'm just going to kick it out. I mean, Moreno was basically saying if uh, one of the guys on there is a defender, like if you were in Chelsea, you would not make that pass. You just kick it out. and. I loved his response, which was basically along the lines of, that's why I wouldn't play for a team like Chelsea. But both of them are basically saying that Maresca's ideas are not working, so he's got to change it. And here's the thing, mistakes happen. And Maresca's whole point when he was talking about, you know, we'll give up 10 more goals for mistakes like that. That whole point is we're trying to build something here. We're trying to make these players understand the system. We're trying to perfect that. And it's not going to be instantly, oh, everybody's great at it. Honestly, I, I look at it and go, I, I don't think we have the players to necessarily play that well. But if we can get the players there, cool. If not, then he'll bring in a player that can. Robert Sanchez, I don't think he's going to be able to play a Maresca system. If he can get there eventually, cool. If not, then we'll have another keeper come in that can do it. You know, I, they, one of the things that I don't remember the guy's name, but I'm, I'm pretty sure his first name was Natum. He brought up the whole Joe Hart experiment for Pep at Man City. He tried Joe Hart there. It didn't work, so he went and got Ederson, and Ederson can play in Pep's system. So I'm looking at it going, why would you want to change because in one game you made a couple mistakes and gave up a couple goals? That to me is just a stupid way of thinking. It's very narrow-minded, and it's basically saying, we're not going to stick to one system. We're going to play this until it, until it doesn't work, and then once it doesn't work, then we're going to try something else, and then we'll, if that doesn't work, then we'll try something. And you're never going to get consistency like that. So their whole mindset of it is ridiculous. And I do appreciate the fact that Maresca is sticking to his guns. You know, and yes, we made some mistakes. We're going to make more mistakes like that because I want to stick to this style of play. I want us to get better at this style of play. And we can't do that if we're not playing that way. If we say, hey, guys, if it gets difficult, change up the style of play, then you're never going to improve. I, I really appreciate that. But the other thing that I think Maresca has done very well kind of be a bit ruthless. Granted, I don't know all the goings on behind the scenes. Maybe some of these players that have left were his decision. Maybe some of them were not. But it does feel like he's come in and he's, he's picked the players that he wants to see in the system and he's got them working for him. And anybody that's not in that starting 11, you could see they want to try to work to get in that starting 11. You, know, you watch in Cuckoo against Barrow, clearly he's trying to prove a point. And he comes off the bench and scores against, against Bournemouth. He's trying to prove a point here. And I think that's very important to have is players that even if they're not starting, they still want to try to get into that starting 11. They're still fighting to get into that starting 11. You know, Sancho comes off the bench against Bournemouth and does well, and then he gets to start the next couple of games. So we're seeing that Maresca, he's got these guys behind him. He's got these players wanting to play. So whenever they do come off the bench or whenever they do start in a cup match, I mean, we'll probably see and Cuckoo, Felix, uh, Mudrik, probably, unfortunately, Neto, they'll probably all start against, uh, I think it's Anderlecht this midweek. They'll start in that match. They started against Barrow. That's their chance to prove themselves. And, you know, we've seen with Matty Awake, he's not really done anything since the Wolves match. I wouldn't be surprised if we, if Neto comes in and has a great game, I wouldn't be surprised to see Neto start the next match after the Anderlecht match. So, I think he's doing a good job of getting these guys really behind the club and not sitting there going, oh, well, I'm not playing. Well, why do I care? I was really worried about that, especially when you bring in so many players that clearly they're bringing them in for the money. It's, it's about the money. You're giving them these long contracts, a lot of money involved. You do have to worry that some of these guys are not going to come in and believe in the project, believe in this club. They're just going to be here to, to accept a paycheck. Maresca's done a great job of Seemingly getting these guys behind the club, behind his project, his system, what he wants to do. And it's, you can just feel the positivity around these players right now. You know, a couple of them, I do think Jackson looks a little frustrated at times whenever things aren't going his way. 
But, I mean, that could just be, obviously, he wants to score, and he's frustrated with himself when he's not scoring. But I don't look at these players and think there's there's some issue here. That You compare it to, like, where Man U is right now. A lot of those players, they don't look like they want to play. They don't look like they want to be there. So it's just such a, a good feeling to have a manager that has got these players to buy into a system and has also found a way to be ruthless with his decisions and say, this this is who I want to play. This is who I don't want to play. If you can't buy into it, I mean, I love what he said at the end of one of the matches, his post-match interview, saying basically, if you don't buy into the system, you don't play. And some people may look at that and go, well, that's harsh. Sometimes you have to be. And honestly, if you have players that can't accept the harshness, that can't cut it whenever things get rough, they're not going to succeed in the Premier League because there's a lot of pressure here. And if you can't succeed under pressure, if you fold under pressure, you're probably not going to make it as a player in the Premier League. So, yeah, all in all, I've been very happy with Moreska. He's proved me wrong for sure. I feel like he's done a great job of coming in and just taking the hodgepodge of players and actually finding a way to get them all to work together, to get a system that we do build out of the back, but we build out very quickly. It seems like it's we start from that defensive line and we try to look to get into the midfield, but most of the time it's trying to break the second press. You know, you've got that first press, you've got the forwards and the the wingers that'll step up high, try to try to get in there into your defense and cause problems. Get past that one, most of the time you have midfielders that are stepping in. But it feels like we are, we don't look to just break the first press from the, the forwards and the wingers. We do try to get past the midfielders too. You know, lay it into Caicedo or Fernandez, and then they'll look to try to find somebody that's past the second block. And now all of a sudden we're into the defense. And now we're we're running at them. We've got pace up there that can run at them, that can cause them problems. So it's it's a very good system that I think builds upon the idea of keeping possession and knocking it out from the back. But it's not just we're gonna knock it, we're gonna move it slowly down the field like what Potter seemed to want to do. It's we're going to get there, we're going to get down the field, and now we're going to be running at their defense and trying to get in behind them. And that's why, again, I'm going to be interested to see whenever we play a team like Forrest, Santo likes to set up his team to be very difficult to break down and look to hit it quick on the counter. They don't typically step out. So I'm sure we'll try to draw them onto us if we're going to continue to play like this. But are we going to be able to? Are we going to be able to find our way to get in behind them? Or are we going to have to find another way? to break down a team like that. And that's where I think Maresca is going to be tested a bit more. And I think we'll see truly also not even just that, but I think also whenever we lose our next match, I think we're going to see the mentality behind this team, you know, behind Maresca. Can he keep these guys focused whenever things do start to go wrong? Maybe we have, maybe we have a couple of injuries that disrupt the, the flow of things. I, I do wonder, will things continue to go right? Will we manage to pick ourselves back up? Or are we just going to see kind of the lack of consistency that we've seen from this team before? So that's that's kind of where I'm interested to see from going forward. But to quickly just go back to what I was talking about before Maresca with the board, while I can't say that I will support how they're running the club at the moment, I can say that as long as we're seeing the results on the field, as long as we are seeing that it's working, I will be okay with it. And that's where I think a lot of people get it twisted where when I say I don't support what the board is doing, how they've treated players like Gallagher and Chalaba, how they've run the transfer thing. When I say that, I'm not saying that, oh, I'm, I don't support them and I'll never support them. Kind of what Rory Jennings was seeming to say. What I'm saying is I don't agree with that. But the reason why I've been extra, I don't support that and why it's been a lot of, you know, you've seen my, if you've seen my thumbnails, it's been a lot of Bowley out, Clear Lake out, all of those guys out. It's because it's not working and it hasn't been working. This season is the first time we've seen it's starting to work. It's starting to click. If it continues to, awesome. I love it. But if we do fall apart again and the inconsistency returns, I'm going to return to, well, then it's not working. So let's change it. Let's do something different or let's get owners in that are going to fix this and not keep causing problems. So that's kind of where I am on the board right now. But with all that being said, time to go into the players because this is where things maybe get a little bit more negative because obviously I've had a lot of good things to say but because this is a review show and I, I'm not just going to praise and praise and praise I do have things that I have problems with and that's why I review but there have been players though that have impressed and haven't impressed we'll start with the bad first and that way we can end with a, a happy note but first and foremost start with Sanchez because 
it, honestly, he's not been that bad. He started the season pretty well. Obviously, great penalty save against Bournemouth. Played pretty well against West Ham. I mean, that's two clean sheets in a row for him. The Brighton match is the first one where I went, oh, God, he's back. Now, two things about that. First of all, in his favor, I will say it's against Brighton. And we do see a lot of the times whenever players return to their old clubs, especially if there's a bit of conflict there. Like, obviously, every time he and Kukurea and Caicedo touch the ball, Brighton fans are booing. So if there is conflict there, a lot of the times we see those players try to overextend themselves. They try to do too much. They try to go over the top, and that most of the time will lead to mistakes. Honestly, from the, from the beginning of the game, even before that first mistake that he made, there was a moment where Fafana was easily going to get to the ball, could have headed it back to him in his box so he could pick it up, but he comes 10, 15 yards out of the box to go clear it down the field and out of bounds. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Fafana had plenty of room. Nobody was behind him. He could have easily headed it back to you so you could pick it up and keep it calm. And said, you come charging out of the box for no reason. So it started with that. And I'm already thinking, what are you doing? But that first goal is a, a prime example of him trying to do too much because he comes flying out nowhere near the ball he's not going to get there clearly he comes flying out Kukurea is there as well so even if the striker does get ahead on the ball it's not going to be that strong no reason for you to come out there and he does and now all of a sudden we're in we're in a gulch we're one nil down less than 10 minutes gone in the game all because of his bonehead decision because he's trying to do too much with it so I feel like it's one of those, you can defend that because he's not always going to be playing Brighton, so he's not always going to make those decisions, hopefully. But the second one, I think, fits into my second point about Sanchez, which kind of works against him. This is who he is as a keeper. He's not a good passer of the ball. He's not. He's had one good pass that I can remember, and that was a long ball to Jackson that set up Palmer's goal against Wolves. It's the only good pass I can remember him making. Most of the time, his passes, especially if they're forward passes, they never find their marks. They go straight to a defender. They go out of bounds. He's mishit so many passes forward. And he's mishit a couple of short passes forward that ended up going right to the other team. Several of them. Not all of them have turned into goals, surprisingly. But some of them have. One in particular in a crucial game against Arsenal last season that let Arsenal right back into the game. And then they ended up drawing after we were 2-0 up. And then this one could have let Brighton back into the game. We're 3-1 up. It's crazy. It's a crazy game. But we are in control now. We're two goals up. We've turned it around. And then, boom, right after that, Sanchez says, here you go, Beliva. Get them back into the game. And now it's 3-2. And they could easily build on that momentum and make it 3-3. So you've now given them a chance back into the game. But that, again, it's down to he is not a good passer of the ball. So if we're going to use the system from Maresca where we're building out of the back and we're going to be using our keeper a lot for his feet, I don't think Sanchez is going to be that keeper. I just I don't think he has it in him. I think he has too many mistakes. I don't think he's accurate enough. And granted, some people will say you shouldn't be expecting your keeper to play with his feet. But that I mean, a lot of the modern day keepers, they should be able to. They should be able to at least complete a 10, 15 yard pass and hit their target and not put it like two yards to the side. So, yeah, I'm just I don't think this was a good game for Sanchez because it, it did exemplify some of the errors that he tends to make which again comes after several games where he's playing really well. So I don't think this will be enough for Maresca to drop him. I think you're going to have to be consistently ineffective or ineffective for Maresca to think about dropping you. But I do think it shows there are still a lot of gaps in his game that will be exposed as we go out, as we go on through this season. Another player that has not impressed me has been Fafana. Uh, I think very frustrating performances from him. He's not doing a lot of the basic stuff right. I mean, bad passes. He's not defending very well. He's losing track of his runners. Uh, the the pull against West Ham, I must be the only person that thought that that wasn't a penalty because everybody, even a lot of Chelsea fans and pundits, were saying, ooh, it's a good thing the referee didn't call that. Am I the only one that looked at that and said Somerville threw himself to the ground? And the thing is, I even saw some people saying, oh, if that was, a, if that was on Chelsea, I mean, Chelsea fans would have been livid about that. I've seen that happen before, and I've not been upset that we didn't get a penalty. There have been moments where Jackson is running through and he has a chance to get to the ball and then the defender will like grab a hold of his shirt or will just you know, basically put a hand on him and grab him. And instead of trying to fight through the grab, he just throws himself to the ground as soon as he feels that, that contact. And I'm like, yeah, that's not a penalty. 
because you didn't try to fight through it. Like, Fafana has a hold of his arm. He doesn't actually pull back on him. As soon as he feels he's, he's not going to get to the ball, he feels Fafana on his arm. He's like, well, time to go to ground then. He doesn't try to fight through it at all. If he had tried to fight through it, and then Fafana pulls him back, and then he goes to ground, okay, yeah, penalty, for sure. But the fact that he doesn't try to get to the ball and he just goes, I'm going down, that to me is like, well, that's why the ref didn't call it. Because he, he didn't, he tried to initiate the foul. It's like whenever somebody sticks a leg out to initiate contact. For me, that's the same thing. You are trying to buy the penalty because, well, he's got a hold of my arm. I'm going to throw myself to ground. Okay, well, that's you. You did that. Fafana did not make you go to ground. So there, that's why, for me, it wasn't a penalty. However, for Fafana, having a hold of his arm in the first place is a stupid decision. I can't defend that. Most refs, if they do see that, and even if you didn't pull him and he does throw himself to ground, some refs will give that anyway. So the fact that you grabbed a hold of his arm as he's running into the box, it's a stupid decision. So Fafana, for me, has not impressed at all. The fact that he started against Brighton, I don't understand why. I thought Tosin played a much better match against West Ham. So I don't understand why Fafana is starting over him, but he's still there. So I don't know what Maresca is seeing that I'm not seeing, but I see a lot of mistakes in Fafana right now. He's definitely not the player that we thought we were going to get. Maybe injuries have caused that, but he's well, well off where we need to be as far as our defense. Granted, I don't think Batty Shield would be a better option, but I do think Tosin would be. I think Tosin and Cole Will, I think it's a strong back too. So that's just kind of my thinking there. And then the final player that for me has just not impressed has been Mudrik. And he's not played too much, to be perfectly honest, but he was not impressive against Barrow. He got himself an assist, which, you know, good for him. But you look at it, the whole match and it's a lot of the same. He's dangerous looking. He looks like he's a threat, but then he gets into the box and the best you can hope for him is, well, hope he gets a corner. That's honestly it. Unless if he has a bunch of options to choose from, he's always going to choose the worst option. The reason that assist happened is because the only option he had was, well, there's Neto, wide open, ton of space back of the box. Just pass it to him. That's all you have to do. And he can do that. If it's simple, he can do it. But when he's driving down the line, he's got, you know, and Cuckoo running into the box. He's got Felix at the top of the box. He's got Neto at the back post. He's got, you know, maybe Gusto further back. He's got a drop in. I think Vega was playing left back. If he's got multiple options to choose from, he cut, I don't know if he just gets caught up in his head trying to decide what to do, but he never chooses correctly. And so either he'll take on a defender, get it poked out for a corner, which again, probably the best option. Or he'll try to make a pass that typically doesn't work out. But he's just not effective going forward. He's not effective in the final third. And I just feel like I'm kind of sick of seeing him. You know, whenever the subs were coming on against Brighton, he was the one, the, the one mistake that I think Maresca made. Fafana, I guess, was the other mistake. But as far as who he brought on, didn't mind any of the subs. I thought Mudrik was a mistake. I don't think he was going to help us at all. And he didn't help us. He didn't do anything against Brighton. So I'm just. I feel like I'm at a point where I kind, I kind of am just done. I'm done with Mudrik. I'm tired of seeing him at the club because he's just not effective for us. As far as the rest of the players, obviously I'm not going to go through each individual player and say, well, they've been good or they've been okay or they've been bad. But I am going to talk about the players that have been really exceptional. So if I don't talk about players in this segment, I haven't talked about them, you know, the first three, then just assume that they've been, they've been okay or they've just they've been good. Uh, but I do want to talk about some of the players that, for me, have really impressed. First and foremost, I mean, I guess let's go ahead and get the obvious out of the way. Um, yeah, that Palmer kid, he's, he's been pretty good, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because he actually started the season pretty slow, and he did do an interview talking about this after the Brighton match, talking about how it was a slow start for him, didn't have the preseason to, to work through, so he's kind of been getting up to speed. But, I mean, that the Brighton match just shows he's quality. He is a quality player, and I, I really enjoy listening to him talk because he really he doesn't sound arrogant when he speaks, but it does sound like he's very confident in himself. Like he sounds like this is just such a simple sport to him. Like it's it's all very simple. He loves what he does, and he he just looks at the game so simply, and it's it's fun to watch him play. I mean, the free kick near I, I was laying in bed and I was I was tired, I was exhausted, I wasn't I, I was kind of just rotting in bed. I nearly jumped out of it. I sat up. I was just lying down and that free kick goes in. And I'm it was it's one of those games though, watching him play that shows 
first of all, he's not a one season wonder. Anybody that thought he was a one season wonder can now shut up a bit. But also, he just he has so much ability and confidence mixed into one player that as he grows, he's just going to keep getting better. I don't know if he'll hit the heights of Eden Hazard because Hazard was just he's on a different planet. I mean, his ability, his dribbling ability was just phenomenal. Even in a, a league like the Premier League, he could stand up to tough challenges. He could ride tough challenges. Wonderful player. Palmer is not, I mean, obviously he's not a dribbler. He's more of a, a creative, he can find great passes, he can score. He's very good at, at winning the ball. And he does have some dribbling ability. He can take on some players, but I don't think that's his forte. So I feel like it's going to be interesting to see where he goes and what what type of player, because again, We've seen a lot of good creative moments. And we've seen a lot of good sc- goal scoring moments from him. So I almost feel like he's kind of leaning into maybe Lampard territory where he's becoming a good attacking mid that can be so effective when he gets in the final third. But also, if you drop him back a bit, he can be good at finding passes and making the play happen. You know, being not necessarily a box to box type of player, but being just an effective body in the midfield that. The, everything comes through him. You know, you find him and he makes things happen. I think he's done a really good job, though, of just showing what he can do. And again, I think the Brighton match was a good game to show he's he's starting to find his feet again. He's starting to find that form that we saw last season. And I think he's going to kick on from here because one thing that I can say about him is where a lot of these players, they can kind of go up and down in form. They can have their games where they're good and the next game be awful. Palmer typically is just consistently he's good. Maybe have one game thrown in there where he's not as effective. But for the most part, most of his games, he's going to be good. He's going to be our best player on the pitch. Another player that's impressed that maybe has gone under the radar because of his performance against Brighton, Jackson. I feel like a lot of people, they're they're griping about the misses. They're griping about the, the chances that he wastes. I just have to disagree with all those people that think he's not good enough because of those missed chances. Anybody that's that's harping on those missed chances and saying, ah, he's not he's not there yet. If you watch his overall play, he is a good player. Yes, the finishing does need to improve, but it will. I mean, we saw against West Ham, he's got it in him. It's just got the the confidence has got to grow to where he can take those chances a lot easier. You know, against Brighton, he's he's kind of quickly rushing himself. He's kind of pushing himself to score and doing a little too much with it. But against West Ham, we saw he scored the first one fairly simply, and that gave him the confidence to go on and score a brilliant second goal with the outside of his foot. So if he has the confidence, we will see the finishing. But everything else about his game is really good. His pressing is phenomenal. He set up the first goal against Brighton doing that. His play on the ball is actually really good. And it's something that I was watching the, the Tottenham Man U match, watching Werner play. I forgot Werner's touch is pretty bad. I mean, you watch him. A lot of the times when he takes a touch, it's it can be a little bit away from him or it can kind of get caught up under his feet. I think that was a lot of his problem because he worked hard. He did do a good job of, of getting in behind teams and putting pressure on the back line as well. But I think a lot of his issue was his touch just wasn't great. So when he got into those crucial positions, he couldn't even find a pass. You know, Even if he wasn't able to finish, he couldn't at least take a touch and say, all right, well, there's a player I can find because his pass most of the time would be maybe overhead or not not the best, or he would get it caught up under his feet and he wouldn't even be able to make the pass. Jackson, his touch, I'm not saying his touch is phenomenal, but he's got a touch. He can play. He can pass the ball. He can move it well. He can dribble. You know, he's, he's a pretty solid player overall. It's just, again, the finishing is the only thing he lacks. And yes, for a striker, you want a striker that can consistently finish, but I think that'll come. I think that'll come the more he plays and the more confident he gets. I think we'll see that. Now, granted, some people are pointing out Nkuku is already an accomplished finisher. And yes, we've seen he does have that composure in the box. But I think Jackson fits our style more than Nkuku does because I think he has more pace and more strength and more height in the final third. I think Nkuku is good for whenever we're kind of dominating the match. He might honestly be effective against a team like Forrest, where we're not going to break him behind him as much. We might need a striker that can be clinical and have good touches in the box and be composed when he gets into those moments. But I think Jackson, for the most part, when we're playing against teams that are stepping out against us, he's going to be one of our most effective players up front. He's going to be one of our most dangerous players up front. Even if he doesn't finish them all, he's going to be good going forward. So 
kind of just here to to give a little bit of a defense for Jackson because I think he's been a lot better than people give him credit for. And I I want to see, even some of the most positive Chelsea fans have said, yeah, he's got to improve his finishing. I'm like, yeah, but there's so much more to his game than that that isn't getting appreciated for some reason. The other player that I did want to give some credit to is Caicedo because he's really been good this season. He ended last season really well, and I wasn't sure if that was just because Pochettino had found a way to kind of fit him into a system and make him work better. No, this season, I mean, it's a, a different system than Pochettino's, but even with him and Fernandez both in there, I thought that may have been the issue is because just they didn't fit well together as a pair. But Caicedo has still been good, even though Fernandez has kind of been hit or miss. He's had his moments this season so far, but he's not been great, especially compared to what we saw from him last season for the most part. Caicedo, though, has been consistently really good. I think the only issue I have with Caicedo right now is his passing could be better. You know, we've seen some good passes from him, but there are some in crucial moments where, especially when we're trying to keep possession in our back back line, I think there's some moments where his passing is a little too weak. It does some hospital balls, you know, stuff that, that puts us in trouble. I mean, the first goal against Brighton, he essentially just lays it back to, to Colwell very slow. Is very lazy, kind of just takes a touch and then lays it back. And there's pressure. I mean, there's a player right behind him. There's another player right there. There was a lot of pressure there, and it just felt like it took him three whole seconds just to take a touch and pass it to Colwell for Colwell to clear it out and get it out of there. They can, first of all, either pass it quickly or get it out of there. I don't know. It was just it was very odd, and there there were a couple other passes against Brighton that I felt were a little weak or right to the other team. So he he does have his moments whenever we're keeping possession where maybe he's not fully focused. But when he's off the ball, whenever he's making defensive challenges, he's shown that's his game. So it was something I, I talked about last season. We brought him in to be a ball winner. We brought him in to have a Conte type of role in the team, and we paid a lot of money for that. But I wasn't seeing it. I'm starting to see it now. He's still not on the level of Conte, because Conte is just a beast. But he's getting there. He's getting better at doing that. He's being a lot more disruptive in there, and I love seeing that. Final player to talk about is in Cuckoo, because... Yes, obviously, scoring a hat trick against Barrow is not, I mean, it's not a phenomenal thing. Oh, you scored a hat trick against the League Two side. But he's played well. He's come off the bench. He's played well. And he doesn't seem to be making much of a fuss, as far as I could tell. And this kind of goes back to what I was talking about with Maresca. How he's got these players wanting to play for him and wanting to prove themselves. For a player like Nkuku, I mean, he's already proved himself. He's already proved that he can come on and do the job. I mean, he comes on against Bournemouth and scores the winner in a tough situation comes on against Barrow, starts against Barrow, and gets himself a hat-trick in the first half. I mean, he's showing he is very capable of doing this. Actually, I can't remember now if he scored all three in the first half or if he scored one in the second half. But anyways, but he's, he's clearly proving himself as a player, and yet Jackson continues to start in the league. Now, granted, some of that could be he's looking at it and going, all right, well, Jackson's got the league, but I've got the, the Carabao Cup. I've got the Conference League. I'll probably have the FA Cup when we get around to that. He may be looking at it through that point of view because, yeah, there are a lot of Conference League games. So he will be playing quite a bit, even if he's not starting in the league. And on top of that, you know, there may be some games where, like I said, maybe Maresca looks at the side and goes, all right, Jackson, this is not a game for you because we're not going to be getting in behind him very much. So Nkuku, you're going to step in for those. Maybe that's what he's communicated to him. Whatever the case, Nkuku's come in and he's been very professional about how he's been doing the job. Comes in, does his job, scores some goals doesn't look bothered by the fact that he's not starting over Jackson in the league. And I have to really appreciate that. It's very difficult, and I have to imagine it's very frustrating whenever you're brought into a club like Chelsea and you are as good of a player as he is, even Felix. You're know, looking at Zhao Felix comes in, and he's a very quality player. Granted, I mean, he's having to choose between Palmer and Felix. I would choose Palmer too. But even then, I mean, you could look and say, well, you know, Palmer can play out on the right, can he? So why can't you slide Felix in there? Palmer out to the right, get Matty Wake off since he's not performing. But a lot of these guys, again, they come in and they just look like they're they're here to to play. And they don't care that they're not going to be playing every match. They come in, when they play, they play, and when they play, they play well. So yeah, I have to I have to give some credit to Nkuku because he's not only played well, but he's he's not made a fuss about the fact that, that Jackson maybe hasn't been as effective in, as him in some games and yet continues to start. He's been very professional about it, and I have to appreciate that. 
yeah, everybody else, like I said, has been good, has been okay. I do want to say as far as the defense has been concerned, because obviously that has been an area of concern for us. I do think, I mean, Kukure has looked pretty good so far this season, which is good. You know, I think he's he's done well since that the highs of the Euros, which is fine. Uh, Gusto, obviously, returning from injury, I thought his, his return has been fine. Cole Will coming in now, he's more of a center back. I still don't think on the ball he's great. He doesn't fit Moresca's style, but he's young, so he could figure it out quickly. But also, I think defensively, he's looked a lot better. I think he's done a good job of getting in the way of shots. He's done a good job of tracking runners, making good defensive challenges. I think his overall defensive play has improved leaps and bounds from where, where he was last season. So that's good to see. But yeah, everybody else, I mean, everybody else has been fine. The, the players that have come in, you know, some of the youngsters that we've seen, like Giu and uh, George and Echen Pong coming into the, the Carabao Cup, it's, it's been overall a lot of good or okay performances. And I think that's fine for where we are right now. I think as we grow as a team, as the players learn to, to click better and gel better into the system, I think we will see a lot of these players, you know, we will see Fernandez start turning in better performances. We will see, hopefully, you know, Sancho turning in even better performances than he has already. I mean, he's got three assists. My overall thoughts on him are he's been kind of up and down throughout the matches. Like there'll be moments where it kind of feels like he's faded out of the match. We haven't seen him for a bit, but then he will pop up and do something that helps the team. So, but I think even he will continue to grow as he, as he grows in this system. We'll see hopefully more from Mediweke, more from Neto uh, in our back line. Hopefully we'll see those players start to, to learn how to pass a bit better and keep it more controlled back there. I think just overall, we'll see these players that are playing okay or good right now. We'll see them get to those excellent performances. We'll see them being effective for every match. That's, that's kind of my hope. Now, will that happen? A lot of that is up in the air. And that's, that's the, the realistic side of me. You know, I want to be positive. I do want to sit here and go, yes, we're definitely challenging for top four. But the re- reality of it is we still have a lot of games to play. We still have a lot of tests that we have to pass. You know, we've passed some of them so far. We've hit some roadblocks that we've managed to overcome. But like I said, force is going to be a different challenge. Force is going to be probably a team that's going to pack it in against us and we're going to have to break them down. We won't be able to get them behind. Liverpool is on the horizon. Obviously, they're a team that are going to step out against us and we may have room to get them behind, but their quality is going to be as good, if not better, than ours, where a lot of the teams we faced have had lesser quality than us right now. So I feel like there's, there's tests on the horizon that we still have to get past, that we still have to make sure we, we get through. Overall, my excitement for the season is here now. You know, it wasn't here earlier. Like I said in my past videos, I was very concerned. I was very worried about where the season was going to go, how Maresco was going to do, some of the players we brought in. I think overall, first of all, I feel like I've been proved wrong about Maresco, which is a great feeling. I love the fact that we have a manager that seems like he knows what he's doing here. But also some of the players that I was doubting, I, I think Sancho is has come in and actually done a pretty good job so far. Now, will he continue? Yet to be seen. He he definitely did not have no impact at United. Came in and did okay there at first, and then eventually kind of faded away. And obviously, he's had good performances at, at Dortmund as well. So it's not like he. I think he's not going to succeed, but I am holding off judgment because it's been only a few matches for him. He's still got. He's got a lot of time ahead of him to see what he can do, to see how much he can improve, to see. If he can be more consistently effective in games too, because like I said, sometimes he fades. The the players though that we've brought in have fit into this system very well. They have proved that, yeah, they, they are good players. Not all of them, most of them have. And I think that for me is the, the biggest positive is that we've got a team that is working to get better, working under a manager that is proving himself. It's exciting for me. And also the fact that Man U is crumbling right now. That's a great feeling to have. <laughs> Uh, it's yeah, Ten Hag needs to stay. He he needs to stay. Let's be honest. We all want him to stay. We all think he's doing a, a fantastic job with United at the moment. It, it he's a he's a great manager for United. He should stay. Get him in. Anyways, but yeah, I think that's about it for these past few matches. I'm hoping to be more consistent. Granted, I, I do have some plans soon. I do have some some time that I'll be away from home this month. So I may miss a couple of games. If I do, I will still 
I'm still going to try to at least start doing shorts. That way I can at least get my thoughts out about player performances and maybe do some ratings of players for the matches. Yeah, as far as full reviews, I may not be able to do them for most of the matches in October. We have a lot, and unfortunately I will be out of town for at least the middle of October, maybe all the way to the end. I'm still not entirely sure yet. Still working those plans out. But at least for the next two matches, I will be here. I will talk about it. I will give my thoughts, and we'll see. All in all, I'm excited. It's it's a good feeling to have. It's We're in a good moment right now, and long may it continue. <laughs> With all that being said, though, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What have been your thoughts so far for this season? Are you excited? Are you one of the pessimists that still think, ah, we're not going to, we're, we're doomed. The, the board is not doing their job, blah, 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 all that stuff. Or are you like me and you're, you're excited, but also seeing that there's a chance that this could all still just be a, a flash in the pan that may fall apart later on this season. Let me know. We can talk about it, discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for more Chelsea reviews. Also check out the channel. We have a lot of TV show reviews as well as a couple of Let's Plays on here. So give those a watch if you have a chance. But until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.